And before you know it, Thursday is upon us. Good to see everybody. Again, my lights aren't working behind me. I can turn them on fairly quickly, though. Glad to see everybody here on a Thursday evening. It's my favorite time. I love coming on here and doing these for an hour. A lot of you guys don't remember back in the day when we first started doing live streams. We would do this for two or three hours. We'd stay on here for two or three hours, chopping it up chart after chart after chart. That's a little bit overbearing. <laughs> Not going to lie. It takes a little bit of juice out of you to stay up that late doing charts that long on live streams. I even remember one very vividly where I fell asleep in the middle of the live stream and woke up within like a couple seconds because I was like talking about garage doors and stuff. I'll never forget it. It was the funniest shit as I caught myself talking about garage doors. Not the point. Glad to see you guys. Let's kick it off, shall we? Crypto after dark. One solid hour. If you haven't done so, please go hit the like button. Please go hit the like button. You don't understand how important it is. While you're there, subscribe and hit the notification bell. We're getting close to 10,000. I got some giveaway shit to do when we hit 10,000. Also, we have something cool coming out next week right over here at 786unlimited.com. You're going to want to be a part of it. If you ever wanted to learn technical analysis, but you felt like you just didn't have time or you couldn't get it done or it was too overbearing or you don't have the momentum or the motivation or anything else like that, we're going to try to help you out in about a week. Be prepared. So what do we got on our hands? Well, I've got a red box drone. This is the same red box from the last live stream. If you remember, we do these every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. The Tuesday and Wednesday ones are only 30 minutes. Thursday one is for an hour. Some people ask why the structure is the way it is. Well, let me break it down for you. All right, we used to just do two live streams, an hour apiece. I know it's late. It's 11 p.m. on the East Coast when I do these. Why do I do it 11 p.m.? Because I'm a father first, everybody. I've got kids running all around this motherfucker constantly. So when they go to bed, it's party time. It's uh, moonshine time. Let's go. I can't do these at 6 or 7 o'clock in the afternoon. I just can't. Today we had wrestling practice. And after wrestling practice, we had a wrestling meeting. And after the wrestling meeting, we came home and made dinner and got kids ready to go to bed and to sleep. And then when we wake up in the morning, I'm going to get on here. I'm going to go in the Discord. I'm going to talk to a bunch of people. We're going to look at a bunch of charts. Then I got consults, usually for three hours a day. Pack in the time. I have time to make videos. Hey, guess what? Now it's time to go get kids from school. If any errands need to be done, that's on me. Pay taxes. Go to the bank. Yeah. So we break these down on purpose, right? We do one hour each week for the for the community all right the 30 minute ones are more informative and a little quicker and they get in out faster right they're by design okay we'll probably never break from the 11 o'clock times we kind of have our own little segment there's really no one else live streaming at this time another reason why we do it right because there's really no competition this late it's not the right time to do it and google trends will very blatantly tell you not to do live streams right now but we do them anyway so let's go say hey to everyone and we'll get started on these charts. What's up, Big Tex? So Mullet dropped a question on us, right? Name the perennial NBA star, all-star, and champion who said, when you play against Michael, you look slow. When you play against Larry Legend, you look stupid. I said Clyde the Glide because I thought he was trying to play a trick on me. Uh, it wasn't Clyde Drexler. I don't think it's Isaiah Thomas or Dennis Rodman because they neither one of them liked Larry Bird. Um, it could be James Worthy. I'm not positive on that one. And I know it's not Magic Johnson. All right, so it wouldn't be any of the Bulls players. And that was pretty much it. Lakers, Celtics, Rockets, and Bulls. Everyone else was kind of a, a, an afterthought back then, uh, early 90s to mid-90s as far as the NBA went. Uh, and in the beginning, in, in, you know, early 80s to mid-90s, it was those four teams. I mean, realistically, you had to go through the Pistons, the Bulls, the Lakers, or the Celtics, and the Rockets. That's it. Um, everyone had their little glimmers, but no one really like broke through and was hitting the hammer. On the nail, perfect every time except those teams. Um, what's up, Jeremy Crypto Humper? What's up, brother? Good to see you. Um, Jag, what's up from Poe? Sing, po, sing uh, Signor K, what's up? Brian McDonald, Lunatic Prophet. 
Uh, say that answer in your YouTube vid just a couple of days ago. Can't remember who, though. Danny Deep Pockets. Bow. What's up, brother? Good to see you. Greg Rubin. What's up, brother? Uh, save a thin joint for this time. I feel you, brother. I feel you. After the stream, not during the stream, okay? <laughs> My kids watch. Um, Ropa Dope, what's up, brother? Good to see you. Dynamis, what's up, my friend? Um, Knox, off work. Wish all you a wonderful stream. Thank you, brother. Uh, Manolo, uh, Danny Deep Pockets just put the link to the website right there, 786unlimited.com. That has our YouTube channel that you're watching right now with all of our past videos. It has our private consult page. In case you want to get a private consult to learn a little better, you may want to watch out next week. There may be some good news for you. All right. Also has our Discord link. You can jump over in the Discord. It's free if you want to get in the general chat section and just look through our educational material that we provide everyone. And our launch pass link, which is how you sign up for the full access to the Discord. Just jump over there and click the little button. No problem. Um, appreciate the time, good sir. And uh, 8 p.m. here, the West Coast workout for Vic. Yes, that's another thing. The West Coast is 8 o'clock, so it's after dinner before bed for them, right? Uh, see, there you go. Mullet said, big game James. Ding, ding, ding. I should have knew that, Mullet, because James Worthy is from the same hometown as me. James Worthy is from Gastonia, North Carolina, just like me, just like Sleepy Floyd, just like Fred Durst. All right? <laughs> I've been listening to Limp Biscuit all day. It's just that kind of mood, that kind of vibe. I don't care what anybody says. That shit was crazy back then in the day, okay? Mid um, early 90s to late 2000s, mid 2000s. Listen, Limb Biscuit concerts were insane. All right. So I, I, I won't be told otherwise. All right. Let's peel into the chart, shall we? Because that's what y'all came for. Not to hear me blab, right? It's entertainment, but nobody really wants to hear the entertainment. Same setup here hasn't changed much. We continue to drive right into this bit of a bull flag right here, sitting above some support, but under some other resistance. All right. Um, this position is in a bad spot and I still do expect short term up here. Now, I don't think it's going to be the full throttle up that many of you may think it will be. I think it just forms another pattern similar to what we already had up top. And regardless of whether I'm in linear mode or log mode here, both these moves look exactly the same, which kind of tells me there's confluence to that red box. Now I'm going to dig a little deeper here and show you, I'm going to flip over to linear mode I'm going to log mode and log mode to linear mode. We go to linear mode, we see kind of that 50 fib lines up more similarly with the red box than log mode does. Then I can get this little smaller move right here, all right, that I don't have necessarily highlighted at the moment because I think a bigger move is happening. But that smaller move does print a pretty neat pattern here as well. It pretty much 1618s right inside that box. And if we put our big fib on top of that, uh, that's still going, you'll see that 1618 and the 50 fib have confluence right there together, right there at the bottom of the red box. I can pretty much say that red box is highly likely. Um, and if I get super close to it, but don't exactly hit it, that's good enough for me, close enough for government work. 17250 to 175 seems like a solid possibility, just as you saw on the thumbnail right here. I can't deny it. It is what it is. I have to play it out here. Um, people keep asking me, is this bullish? Well, if you're trading the low time frames, yes, it is bullish. If you take a step back, no, we are still buried under trend lines, buried under sell pressure. This is going nowhere fast. We're still in this massive falling wedge, making lower highs and lower lows as we truck along. There's nothing bullish about this. Anything above four hours or, or 12 hour chart. It's all bearish from here. All right, and those are the time frames that really, really provide that crunch, all right? Um, closings and openings are based on daily charts for the most part. Uh, why is that? Because we're humans and we're fallible, and that's how our internal clocks work. All right, now, hyper now mathematically speaking, you have weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly charts as well that also play a pivotal role. Why? Because a lot of people will try to associate news with the chart. They'll try to trade the news when they should have already started trading the chart before then. It's a common problem. People try to trade the chart. People try to trade the news after the chart's already moved and they get burned, just like they did Wednesday when everybody decided they're going to be bullish because the FOMC news is going to be bullish and it's just the fucking meeting minutes being posted. They already knew what happened in the last one. It's just a transcript of the same thing. In case you don't understand how that works, 
I'm the secretary of the HOA in this neighborhood. It's my job to take the transcripts from the HOA meeting, type it up after I record it, and then post it on the website. Right? That's what I do. It's no big different. No big thing. It's the same thing that we already did just in word form. What are we doing? Right? This is the way people work. It's fine. Uh, there's there's a thing that it could be redactions or changes to that report. I don't care. It's not something that I buy or care about. Uh, <clears throat> so that's my look uh, for Bitcoin there. I don't see anything changing anytime soon till this red box get hit. When do I see it getting hit? I see it between January 10th through January 18th. I think that time frame is the time frame that likely points to the red box. All right. It could happen a little sooner than that, but I don't quite think it'll get up that high that fast. It may. May just shoot up there real quick and form one quick candle. Again, it kind of seems unlikely. And that just sets up that bigger move down that we know is coming, moving us down here to the low teens. Only a matter of time. It's a geometry, not certainty, but a geometry mathematical equivalent. It's going to happen. Just got to wait it out and watch it. It's only a matter of time. Uh, Greg Rupin, what's up, brother? Did it all for the Nookie Nines. I was listening to that before the stream started, but I was watching the uh, Woodstock 99 performance. Inse it's just insane. It's a quarter of a million people all moving together, singing every single lyric together. It's madness. It's madness. I can't, ex I can't describe it. Like, I was only 16 when that happened. I didn't get to go. But... I did watch it on TV and was blown away, right? I was blown away that it was happening. One of my neighbors in the neighborhood where I used to live as a teenager um, bought it on the pay-per-view. So he watched Lint Biscuit on TV at Woodstock. I thought it was the most amazing thing ever. That was a rare thing, which was pay-per-view back then. You guys don't remember about how that worked, but anything that was important was on pay-per-view, right? It was channel 96 where we were because there was only like 15 channels back then. <laughs> Holy shit. Showing my age. Never mind. Let's move on. All right. Ethereum. Um, so similar look here on Ethereum, only it's a little more clean. And what I mean is that it's a, it's a pretty, pretty flat plain answer right here. You have two trend lines. All right. Uh, I don't think it's rocket math right here to see what's happening. Whether you come off of this top trend line, you think that one's going to happen, which I don't think that holds. Uh, or you see that we've already broken one, which I think is the more likely response here. We've already broken this trend uh, and we're likely to proceed with moving up here. That seems more realistic to me. Um, a 1618 doesn't seem out of the realm here. Uh, I think it's fully possible. And depending on how far I pull it out, uh, I get the same answer each time. Uh, we could see a run up to... 1400 to 1500 here just to tag this trend line uh, and then roll over and play dead. I'll give you an example of how the price action may play out here. All right, something like so. And then print that low that we've been waiting on. Uh, that's not to scale and that's not exactly how I think it may happen. Realistically speaking, it may not even get that high. It may roll over and play dead from here, okay? I don't have a crystal ball. All I know is I don't see anything hyperbolish. This is going to absolutely use up the momentum here. Just getting to the trend line, that's not good enough. Just getting above the trend line slightly, that's not good enough. You can see from the RSI what will happen in that time frame. You will go overbought. Going overbought in a bear market is bad news. You need so much momentum so fast to break that trend that just simply hasn't happened yet. It hasn't printed that kind of momentum uh, until it does. No, thank you. Now, this was a start back here, right? You need this to continue for weeks, right? Uh, that's the momentum you need over here on the other side of this white line. Just hasn't happened yet. Uh, it will eventually. It will eventually break this line. Not yet. Uh, I need everyone to understand you're still in the middle of a bear market. It hasn't stopped its cycle. Uh, it will continue plowing on through the field just like that. Um, depending on how you want to draw this, same thing. I'm still waiting on this wedge to fail. Print 1,000 and then print 800. 
I do see those numbers uh, not as a certainty, but as a uh, mathematical equivalent that very well may play out exactly like we think. Um, Jeremy Monroe, what's up, brother? You're not even drunk yet. Timeless Travel, good man, good, good to see you. How you doing tonight, man? Uh, nothing to see here. What's up, brother? Good to see you. You know I need to change the garage opener. Any recommendations? I get quoted 700 put a new one. Bro, um, I'll look at mine after we leave here, but I'm not super thrilled with mine either. You know, I'll, a lot of people will complain about the noise that it makes. It's not the noise that I have a problem. I want to say it's overhead door company that mine is. Um, the, the problem I have with mine is how bulky it is. It's annoying. Um, when they built this house, they put the water heater in the garage so the garage door is insulated. Now, I don't mind that, but the problem is it's so heavy and bulky that if anything gets in the way and it touches it, it immediately slams shut. So annoying. And, uh, I mean, when you got a bunch of kids, you got a bunch of shit. So that immediately causes a problem with stacking stuff up on the shelves, which are next to the garage door. Oh, my God, if one blade of grass is in front of that laser beam, that garage door ain't going to close or open. Very frustrating, right? And then once it gets into its blinking cycle, you got to <coughs> reset it to get it to even communicate with you again. That's frustrating. Garage door talk, everybody. <laughs> um, nothing to see here. Not that hard to do yourself. Yeah, it's not that complicated. Um, I'm not sure the the brand I would go with. I looked up some and I wrote them down, but I don't know where I put them. Um, I would I would I wouldn't use the same company. I would use a different brand uh, than the one I have. Maybe a belt drive one. I've heard those are much quieter. And while you have to replace a belt, the belts are like 10 bucks. So you can just buy two or three of them at a time and not have to worry about it. Um, that's probably the route I'll go. All right. So there's my Ethereum take. Same thing as before. Nothing to change. What's up? What's up, Terry? Good to see you, brother. Um, all right. BNB, similar situation where you bounce off the slower trend line. Um, you know, it, ex we expected this to happen and it happened a little faster than I thought it would. Now, You've got this bit of a fallen wedge right here. If this fallen wedge breaks, which I believe it will eventually break, that's probably our best entry point. Um, that may do it without without Binance, I mean, without Binance, without Bitcoin or Ethereum doing their own thing. Binance, Coinmatic, Quant, Morpheus Network, and a few others have this same look. Doge have this same look where they've broken the trend line, but now they're dancing on the top. It's interesting to see how long this may take. XRP back in 2017 did this for six months. It danced around on top of the trend line before it left and moved on. Um, we may see that thing happen just like that again. Um, but I don't think the timeline's correct for that. I think we're likely to see uh, our 50 Fib retracement come off the top of this move here and likely create a situation to where we move up about to the 50 fib which will be snipers alley on this fib here this is still going to be my uh uh well how to word it my mid 2023 summer peak price around 350 for binance coin uh, and as you see that's not an astronomically high number compared to what the price is now again not all these are going to perform amazingly in 2023. You will get some good percentages. Uh, but the big money is to be made in 2024 and beyond. Um, 2024, 2025. 2024, you're going to see a lot of the top coins move, right? And then they're going to complete their move and they may do a secondary move. But then you're going to see that influx of alts and you're going to see those alts pop off like crazy. This is exactly what's happened for the last two cycles. Both of them uh, I've been able to be somewhat a part of. So uh, I fully expect that to happen again. There's nothing changed to cause that differently. And I know people are going to try to bring up FTX or Binance or whatever. None of that shit matters to me. Um, so long as you have the availability to buy it, it's fine. Now, um, I heard someone tell me something interesting, uh, not yesterday, but the day before, uh, that Binance, you know, 90% of all Bitcoin trading volume happened on Binance, right? Um, cool. Cool. If that closes, supply and demand happens and people go elsewhere. This was my argument for the banks back in 2008. Now, I understand that you're going to have a mass unemployment movement and a mass money fr freeze problem. But again, that's not my problem. That's the problem you created. But whenever you have these companies that go bankrupt and fold, 
while they can file for protection through chapter 11 or chapter 13 bankruptcy, the problem is when you allow them to fail and bail them out over and over again is they're not going to change their ways. If you just let them fail, those employees that are good will find new companies and those old co those other companies that didn't fail will hire them because they understand that the best employees maybe got treated shitty and it was an upper management problem because good companies know that upper management problems exist and they can single those out and note that. Like CZ knew that FTX had an upper management problem, right? So you can call that out. And then you can get the best employees from that company to come work for you. This is standard practice for anyone who's ever worked in a small company. You know this. You know that one small company competes with another small company through employment. They got to find the best workers for their company and they're hard to come by, right? I'm cool with letting people fail. I'm cool with letting things fail. I don't like bailing people out. Um, I don't think that's something we need to worry about, honestly. 2023 is going to have good vibes coming in here through spring and summer. There's going to be a lot of feel-good stuff. And then you're going to get your legs cut off in September and October. Just be prepared. All right? I'm just warning you now. It's likely. Um, Chamberlain and, Gen and Jenny are good brands. Yep. Chamberlain. Thank you. That's it. Jeannie. Jeannie's one I had on the old house, and I didn't like it either. It squeaked. It was chain drive. It was super noisy. It didn't ever break. Uh, Chamberlain. That's the one I was. Thank you, Mullet. Uh, Liftmaster. Uh, I don't. I don't know about Liftmasters, Jeremy Monroe. Uh, hey, Nan. What's up, brother? Good to see you. What do I see with X Y O? Well, let's have a look, shall we? And we shall. There used to be. If you wonder where I get that saying from, there used to be a guy who did a radio show here locally, and he said, uh, "Shall we?" And we shall about everything. It was super frustrating, right? So, um, what you're seeing here on X Y O, unless you was already in this. Um, this is going to pull back with the quickness, super overbought in a bear market. Like I just repeated about what Bitcoin's going to do. This move looks very similar to dent. You had roughly 200% plus movement here over the last few days, unless you caught it, it's too late to get in. You've already missed 220%. Now getting in, you're begging for it. The same thing right here that happened is likely to happen again. We get this run up and this tail off. Now, everything I think is going to come up together soon. So just wait for it. Uh, don't panic and freak out. Um, I'll show you Dent here to give you a better example of what I mean. I saw Dent move the other day and I went, oh, shit, I missed it. Then I realized, all right, Keith, did you really miss it? I don't think so. Same move here for Dent, where it shot up, did very good percent for a few days, and then immediately tailed off. Expect X, Y, O to do similar, but I'm glad you pointed it out uh, because we're seeing, yeah, it's a great time to take profits. Absolutely. What you're seeing here are these moves up, and this is exactly what I highlighted on the last live stream when I said, hey, look, you're going to get chances here to get some profits and get some of your money back after being stuck for almost a year now in tokens, right? Because realistically speaking here, a lot of people have been stuck you know, I don't care whether it's Bitcoin or Ethereum or Binance Coin or XYO or Dent or whatever you're looking at. A lot of people have been stuck in tokens for a solid year plus now, right? And you've watched your tokens diminish in price over and over and over. Some of them are down 90, 95%. Some of them are down 50 or 60%. Either way, you've been getting killed here and hammered by downtrend. What you're going to have here, just like you had Dent and XYO, you have these moves up here that give you a chance to get in, get some of your profits back. Maybe not all of them. Again, perhaps you bought in at $12 and it's only up to $7 and you want to get all your money back. Well, I'm sorry. That's really not likely to happen until the next bull run, if it ever happens. All right, so this is a chance to get some of your liquidity back by selling some, getting some of your profits, getting some liquidity and being prepared for the rest of the market to nose over. Most of you constantly take your fiat and put into the system and you feed the system. You feed the system. Honestly, you feed people like me who take profits all the time. You're really not feeding into your own wallets. All right. You're you're buying, but <laughs> you're buying what we sell. All right. The tokens that you own are losing value and the ones we have aren't losing value. Please understand that's not the best strategy ever. All right. It works if you have a ton of money or if you never 
want profits. Well, it's time to start understanding that if you don't make anything from this, you have unrealized gains. And unrealized gains mean nothing here in the real world. All right. I want everyone to get realized gains. I want everybody to make some money here. Learn your lesson from last bull market. There's a time to stop. And I'm happy to help you know when that time to stop is. But unless you're willing to commit yourself and actually stop, you're never going to bring home any money in your actual wallet. That's something that I'm going to harp on continuously for the next several months. Get your profits, get your profits, get your profits. You're going to continue to see charts like this that shoot up 50, 100, 200%. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. So prepare for it. When we see these trend lines break, I'm going to jump in, uh, you know, full cannonball, full cannonball. I just can't bite it yet. Um, I fell into this trap before. These, these things can, these knives can continue to fall for a long time. Um, oh shit. Uh, that's what I thought, but I wasn't able to see when looking at the chart, if it was hitting the top zone for this rally, 230 or 240% is pretty awesome. Even if it's not the top, <laughs> that's pretty darn great. Um, Studi Crypto, can we look at WWE as price retest in the 200 moving average, continue long-term uptrend? Well, let's look and see. Um, Mullet says, why would I want profits? I'll just have to pay taxes on them. That's a great, oh my God, that's a great, that's a great saying. Um, everyone always worries about the taxes, but if you didn't make anything, who cares? You actually have a tax write off, right? So what Pelosi did, she lost $2 million last year on options, but that's also a $2 million tax write off. That's the only reason I wouldn't take profits would be to be able to claim a loss. Um, but at the same time, she had to sell those options to be able to have that as a loss. I've talked to my CPA about this. Uh, I still have strong NFTs, right? Um, these are a great way for me to counteract uh, taxes when they come because I bought a ton of NFTs and I lost good money on those. So I can use that tax write-off later when I make profits and drastically, drastically save money there. I still have all the transactions, all that good stuff. So I've, I've got it ready to rock just in, just in case, right? Um, I won't forget about those just in case the taxes get out of hand. So uh, you ask about WWE. Uh, we still got a bit of a downtrend here. Um, 200 moving average did bounce. That's pretty awesome. Uh, you did go oversold on the RSI. As soon as this thing cracks back through uh, the red line and it looks like, well, that red line doesn't really prove anything right now. Um, yeah, I mean, it isn't a terrible spot to try right now. Uh, but you do have trash in the way. The 21, the 100, and the 50 moving average are all in the way. Plus, you failed this trend line right here. The real magic is if we break this red trend line again, right there. That red trend line needs to break. Uh, if you put up the cloud here, you see you're still under the cloud. Uh, that would be my confirmation, breaking the cloud here. There may be some profits in the meantime here, working its way up to the top of the cloud. But be careful. Like I said, trash in the way. There's moving average in the way. And you see your baseline starting to push down right here uh, and roll over. That's the, the thin red line you see right there. Uh, that's the uh, that's the that's the baseline. Uh, you want the price over the baseline, and as you see, it's very much under. So, missed the perfect spot already. It was two days ago. That was the perfect spot. Um, I would wait for a retest uh, or a break of this major trend line if it was me. Uh, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. I'm just some idiot on the internet. Please don't do what I do. Uh, but as far as trades go, make your own mind. Make your own mind up on trades. I simply provide technical analysis for what I would do, what I'm going to do. Um, your choice on what you do with your own money. I preach this all the time. It's your money. Don't let me spend your money. You spend your own money. All right. You make your own decisions with your money. When you got into crypto, you made that conscious choice to become your own financial advisor. So start thinking like one. Fair? Fair. Um, let's real quick look at some other uh, top assets. SPY still floundering around. 
Um, bouncing under trends, under two different trends, still pointing toward target one, and I think an ultimate target down here at 338. Uh, that's high time frame support, as you see right there. Uh, that's that pink line. Just haven't quite gotten there yet. All right, uh, Apple. Huh. Yeah, uh, apparently this is Elon's fault. This is all Elon's fault. The same people who are trashing Elon Musk own Apple phones. And look at that. I guess it's their fault, right? If it's Elon's fault, that means it's their fault too because the same whiny crybabies who are mad at Elon for selling Tesla stock own Apple phones. So maybe it's time to stop playing the blame game. Um, <laughs> ultimately, I see lower prices here too for uh, Apple. Flip it over to linear mode and you can kind of see what I mean. Um, 116, 109, 100. Makes sense. Um, that lower S3 line is down there at 110. I don't know if it gets there that fast. Uh, it may be a month or so before that happens. Then again, it may go very rapidly, but you know, most of these equities move slow. As you see, none of these candles are exactly humongous, right? Uh, you're not going to get very much of that. You're going to get a lot of minor, small candles. It's just the maturity of the market. Uh, Microsoft still getting blitzed. I guess this is Elon's fault too. Uh, more down on the way. She's already failed Sniper's Alley. Um, she's already failed the Golden Pocket. You may get a retrace back up to that Golden Pocket, and it may play around a little bit. But ultimately, I think you see more failure here down toward the $200 barrier. Um, eBay, better than most. Better than most. Uh, it's trying to break this trend right here. And depending on how you draw it, it's broken or he is breaking it. Um, you know, whatever. <sighs> of the big tech companies, it's one of the few that's doing well. Uh, Amazon still getting absolutely rickrolled by downward pressure here. Must be Elon's fault. Um, Tesla itself. This one's clearly Elon's fault, right? Grow up. Approaching the boxes of contention here at $100. There's another one down here, uh, which lines up with high time frame support pretty much at around 70 bucks. It's fully possible for that to happen. One thing at a time though. Okay. I don't, wasn't expecting it to get to a hundred as fast as it did. Um, but you know, new year. We'll see what happens. Um, realize losses, make them tax breaks for the bear. Absolutely. What's up, bro? Good to see you, brother. <laughs> Damn it, mullet. I feel seen. <laughs> uh, what's up, Bachvis Vision? He's, Thomas Travel says, hey, sis. Oh, it's a chick. It's a chick show in here now. Okay. Uh, one more thing to look at Netflix here. Uh, we were able to call this one out pretty well over in the Discord uh, when it happened that this thing was going to bounce and move up, and it did. Uh, it's continuing to do well. Still tracking north here. We can pull a fib on this and see the movement. Uh, it's pretty darn clean. Stuck under the 50 fib at the moment. It did close the gap here uh, back up to the big gap that it made. Uh, there's still a gap up here toward 513. Now, I'm not certain that it sprints to this. In fact, it may have a, a movement, something similar to this, where it gets up here to this level uh, and then chops itself out a bit. It's already used up a good bit of momentum. Um, or it may roll over at the 50 fib here and uh, play a little ping pong. But I do think it ultimately gets back up here to this $500 area um, based on the fact that there's a CME gap right there. And it's broken trend and created a new uptrend. Um, now, it's going to be tough to crack through some of this resistance. I understand and I agree with that. So uh, let's give it some time to play out, see how it does. And uh, I bet you you'll get uh, some pretty darn good price action from it moving forward. Um, let me resituate real quick because this chair is kind of starting to hurt my ass. It's kind of wearing out. I'm going to have to get a new cushion or something. All right. Uh, under what circumstances would you use linear instead of log? So linear, when you have a humongous chart, and for most equities and stocks, you can get away with linear mode. Whenever you go out to a high time frame, you really need log mode because some of these charts are so big that the scale won't fit on the screen anymore. So you have to use your scale on the right, which is over here near my right hand on this column that you see right here. This column right here needs to scale up accordingly because if you don't, linear mode will change the size of the candles on a weekly, monthly, quarterly, or yearly basis. So anytime I'm in looking at a lot of candles at one time or pretty much all of crypto, uh, anything above daily, I'm using log mode. I'll go down to linear mode if I don't have many candles on the screen or if I'm sub four hour. 
it seems to work fine for that. Um, and linear mode will work on equities as well. Um, I like to sometimes flip back and forth to see if there's a large difference between the two. And if there's a large difference, I tend to go back to log mode. Um, but uh, for linear mode, you can get away with it. Just be careful and understand that for crypto, you're missing a ton of information because it's way too volatile to be goofing off in linear mode. Um, the volatility just isn't there a lot of times with the equities. Just the way it is. Uh, if you haven't done so, please, 55 people are watching, 41 likes. If everyone go hit like, that'd be awesome. 55 out of 55 would be dope, right? Little like button right there. Click it, dink, like that. It doesn't make noises. That's okay. I got to get a new one made so it makes a ding noise when you push it or whatever. That's whatever. Um, all right, let's jump out of this and go over to some more altcoins. Algorand still in the green box here. Um, last couple of days, it's kind of started to flounder and throw some red candles like it wants to jog sideways potentially. Um, that sharp uptrend seems to want to fail. There you go. Very sharp uptrend seems to want to fail. Um, we'll give it some time and see how it does. I'm not sold on it. Um, kind of sideways in my opinion or down. Uh, the knife may keep falling. Uh, Ripple coin, uh, the Kardashian coin continues to fail and show downward pressure, even though you had this nice big green hammer candle right here. I think this may be our low going forward. We'll see. I can't be positive on that yet. Um, what I do know is we've got a really ugly head and shoulders forming right here. And if this heifer plays out, boy, that's going to be bad. All right. There's a possibility that that plays out and I don't want to uh, break your heart or anything, but, uh, for all the accounts with the chicks with the big boobs and photoshopped uh, or Instagram filtered avatars over on Twitter, I hate to break your heart, but you're going to have to go back to looking pretty because investment advice isn't the best thing for, to come from you. It's mostly just how you look. Yeah, I said it. Um, Let's see. Um, done and done. But what if I don't like it? I <laughs> don't want it. Don't want a channel. That's a dope name. Thank you for talking. By the way, if you're new on here and you don't normally go talk, hop over here real quick in the in the comment box and ask me if I, about a chart that you may want to see. I will give it a gander. All right. That's what we do here. We talk charts. Um, ADA and no bullshit from me. You'll get no bullshit. I, I have a zero tolerance for bullshit. I really can't take it. I'm too old. I don't have the I don't have the patience. Or the wherewithal to bullshit you. I'm, I just don't have the mental capacity to care anymore <laughs> about spending that much time to bullshit people. It blows my mind. It really does. Um, ADA still got a ton of pressure. It did hit my green box and bounce back up. I still need to see it crack this white line before I'm convinced. At a minimum, you're likely going to get a double bottom here. Um, worst case Ontario, you're going to get more than double bottom and you're going to get this thing to roll over and move down here toward the ultimate level at about 15 cents or so. And that makes sense because that's about 50% less than where we're at now. That's a 50%, nearly a 50% price shed, uh, for ADA to do that. That would require Bitcoin to really move fast and Ethereum to really move fast for, uh, for, uh, Cardano to do something similar. Realistically speaking, right? XLM, similar story, similar fashion, stuck in my first red box here. Uh, I still think it comes down to this green one. You can see it's really not that far away. It's really not that far away. Only a matter of time, I think. A uh, ton of sell pressure here, just getting crushed. Blame it on whoever you want to blame it on. CRV, uh, still waiting for the uh, numbers to get hit here. Uh, downward pressure, still pushing it down. I still like 44 to 47 cents minimum. Uh, or lower. Uh, it may not go that far. It may stay in this fallen wedge and then break out. We'll see. I'm happy to play it if it does. Play the ball as it lies, right? Shoot him again. Um, Dogecoin. Still got the influencers on here. They're all full of shit. Yeah, I said it. Um, still riding its fallen wedge here. Not doing much of anything. Um, they all got really, really giggly and happy. Uh, when those first couple candles happen, but that's exactly what happens every single time. The people who don't know what to do always buy first and buy more and buy more 
uh, and we're more picky with our spots and better at it. So somewhere down here, we're going to get some price action. Uh, when this breaks loose, this might be our time. Okay. Um, this is what it did last time. We have evidence, uh, historical evidence, that this may be the time for Dogecoin. It moved before and during Bitcoin's move last time as well. We'll see. Okay. SHIB, similar situation, but it's still under the trend line. And I don't expect it to perform quite as well as Dogecoin. We'll see. FTM, same old story here. Um, story of OJ, nothing's changed here. All right. Um, when it does, I'm happy to tell you, I got nothing for you until then. Still getting crushed by sale pressure. You do have a bit of a falling wedge at the bottom. So it makes sense to have this thing roll over and break here at some point. But we don't know when, and we don't know at what level it's going to fail to. We have to wait this out and see what happens. Um, I hate to break your heart, but at the same time, I don't mind breaking your heart because you shouldn't have your heart in this. It should be simply your mind. One inch, nothing to talk about. Downward sell pressure, about to test a new low. Um, getting worse and worse by the day. Um, VRA, Mike Isaac says. VRA. We can look at VRA. Not a problem. Um, let's see. Uh, band. Yeah, we can look at band. That's why I love this channel. No glasses of hope I'm being served. Just facts to you. Yes, ma'am. I have no rose-colored glasses. I don't wear glasses, as you see. I do have some sunglasses around here somewhere, but I'm a cheapo, and I worked in trade for a long time. Uh, worked on roofs. Um, I was on construction sites, big buildings, downtown stuff up on roofs. So the glasses that I have are like safety glasses that are tinted. Uh, and I loved them. I wore the hell out of them all the time. So that's the only kind of sunglasses I buy. I can get a 20 pack for $12. And if I screw them up, I throw them away and grab another one. Who cares? Right. I'm just not an expensive sunglasses guy, but I damn sure don't got rose colored ones. Um, I have, like, VRA still stuck. Ton of sell pressure here. It's in my green box. I still like it to come down to 0016 at least. Maybe farther. The knife is still falling, and I can't stress this enough. Don't reach for fallen knives. Don't chase waterfalls. Let the water hit the floor, okay? Um, so uh, Crypto Humber says, also, may want to check if your fib retracement levers are using log scale or not. Absolutely. So if you click your fibs and then you click settings and roll down to the bottom, Fibs based on log scale needs to be checked on if you're going to use log mode on your chart. If you don't, your fibs will not line up to your log mode and you will get frustrated. Remember that, please. That's in the fib retracement video over in the educational material. What educational material am I talking about? Glad you asked. God, that's bright. All right, there you go. Educational material videos right here. Copy, and I'll send them over to the chat right there. Paste free videos for you to learn how to use technical analysis. Honestly, just these top four right here will make you so much money and save you so much money. Just those top four will make and save you so much money. Now you can go down the rabbit hole farther, right? The top five or six. Oh my God. And you're trading way up there, way up there with some of the best. All right. VRA does have big gains available here. As you see, 27X uh, on the next bull cycle, which I think eventually happens, but not right now. Not until 2024 or later. Um, shut up, Keith. We love to hear opinions. Well, opinions are like assholes, Jeremy Monroe. We all have them and no one wants to see them unless they're bleached. <laughs> oh, that was terrible. Oh, Lord. Um, let's see. Most will adjust accordingly, right? Most, but not all. Um, Singor says, Keith just wants to make that meal. You're damn right. I just want to make that million. Man, look, I got goals and I got aspirations, okay? And I'm not going to be able to hit that goal in 2023. I know that, all right? 2024 and 2025, I got a million-dollar goal, a million-dollar dream, all right? I want to see it happen. I want to see that number hit. I can't fully stress what that means to me, but... It's not to make, it's not to rub it in any of your faces because y'all are here watching and y'all care and you want to learn. It's to rub it in people's faces who said I couldn't do anything. I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. I would never be successful. 
I would be dead or in jail. I'd just be some drunk or I'd be some dumb dope head or I'd be in jail because of uh, running with the wrong crew or I would be poor or I'm uneducated. I'm too stupid to learn how to do anything. I cannot wait to put these up and rub it in their face when I see seven figures in my bank account. I cannot stress it to you enough what that's going to do to me. All right. Um, man, I'm excited for that moment. Like I think about it every single day. Like that's my goals and I have nailed that to my forehead and I'm going to make it happen. All right. I want you to all set goals for yourself too. I think I can make more than a million, honestly. And I think I'm shooting myself short there, but that's fine. Okay. Not stressing on it. Um, just one goal of many. Okay. I have other goals as well. I mean, I got multiple kids to put through college here. So, um, you know, a lot of stuff's going to have to happen and it's got to be me that does it. I work best under pressure, so it's fine. If I put the pressure on myself, whatever. Uh, someone asked for band. B-A-N-D. B-A-N-D. Remember that? Um, the band from uh, MTV. <laughs> All right. So similar to Dogecoin, only it failed the trend line and never got over it. Because of that, it's got a ton of downward pressure here. You have peeled back to 786, right? The Sniper's Alley. Better hold a dollar thirty because if it doesn't, she's heading down to double digits. Uh, if that dollar barrier breaks, that's bad. Now we may see this thing just drag the bottom at a dollar and hold on there. Right? It may just ride these lows where it drags the bottom here and then breaks. Everything's gonna move slightly differently here when we get this last capitulation and last push down. Um, we'll have to see how this plays out, but it's definitely not a buy yet. And it's definitely not quite time. Now it's worth rolling the dice on. If you think it's going to roll up here from sniper's alley and move up some, I don't know if I would play that game. That's too big, a bit too dangerous for me right now. Um, Keith discouraging crypto TA. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, do I watch trailer part boys? Listen, it's not rocket appliances to understand that I watch Trailer Park Boys, okay? I'm only asking for a couple things. Some pepperoni, some chicken chips, and some jalapenos. Not asking for a lot. Okay? N NASA, space people, perhaps you've heard of them. <laughs> oh, boy, I'm an idiot. All right. All right, check out VRA. We just did that. Pre-search and tail coin. Now, pre-search is interesting because it was up yesterday when everything else was down. I still have a bunch of pre-search tokens from my nodes um, that still put off a ton for me. I want to say I have like 80,000 or 90,000 pre-search tokens. Um, I'm going to chunk them when I get the time, right? When, when it comes back to bull market time and that thing presents its opportunity, out the door you go. I'll take my gains and giggle about it. I made five figures plus last time off of pre-search. So uh, I'm not going to complain about it at all. Had We had multiple of these big hitters last time. Still not ready. It's still in my box down here. I think it may move lower or sideways and play itself out the rest of this wedge here to the right. But I do like 300 plus percent uh, the next time around. Even if it only goes to the 382 level, that's still 180%. Um, from the low there or about 150%. And I'll take that every day of the week. So I think that's at least what it does in 2023. Okay. Um, USDT. Let's look at that. The dominance chart for Tether. All right. Still riding that trend, trend line here and riding that fallen wedge. It broke, moved north, created another one, a very sharp one this time. It's trying its best to bounce that, bounce that trend line right now. Now, the MACD kind of sideways on the top. Uh, RSI kind of sideways on the 50. Um, let's see what happens here. It's still got a chance to leg up, and if it does, it's going to get gnarly. Um, pivots, it's sitting right on top of the pivot. Yeah, watch out for Tether Coin. All right, watch out. This thing very well may move north uh, and move north in a – non-gingerly fashion it may move uh rapidly uh yeah look out that may go all the way up to ten and a half percent in time okay be careful same thing with usdc uh still riding on the top of this trend line here uh pivots it's right under the pivot not over it like tether was 
um, and the cloud. Obviously, it's sitting right next to the cloud here. So we'll see if it bounces up from here again. Eyeballs, be ready. We can make it gnarly coming into next week. All right, like I said, between the 10th and the 28th, I think we're going to have our movements. I think, well, I think that'll be where our bottom, quote unquote, comes in. I can't be positive that I can only uh, chart it as it happens. That's what we do. We don't do price prediction. All we do is find spots on charts. People get confused about technical analysis and they think it's some sort of magical prediction tool. It's not. That's not what we do. We find points on a chart. We move to it, and when we get to that next point, we reevaluate and do it all over again. It's very basic. All the other nonsense, I just don't have time for. Um, Tailcoin. Almost forgot. Sorry. All right. After that big run up, it's kind of played dead here, right into the sideways. I kind of expect uh, a similar move. Watch for a break here and a ride up. All right. Um, I do think it comes back down to 0014 eventually. Eventually. Um, just not yet. And like I said, watch for this break right here. It may crack that trend line. Very sharp trend line right there. May crack it. When it does, you got a chance to scalp some here, but not a ton. So be careful. Um, not yet, though. He said, ooh, crypto speaking my language. <laughs> Gala. Oh, God. We really want to look at Gala. Man, it looks awful. But fine, we'll look at it. Oh, I have a ton of Gala tokens as well. My node's still running. I bought my node way back, okay? Uh, it's still going. It's paid for itself three times over. Not going to complain. Everything from here that I get from this is all profits. It's all a giggle and a laugh. If I had done this correctly and played it out properly, I would have made six figures plus on Gala. Can you believe that? Well, that was my fault, right? Um, well, I think I ever make that again. No, but I'm going to be happy with whatever I get. You still got a ton of sell pressure here. Nothing to write home about yet. Break the line and we can talk. I may even sell these off when we get up this 2023 peak here. Um, let's see. Optimism. All right. All right, I've got a ton of stuff drawn out here. So we're still stuck under this purple line. You can't really see it very well. Let me move this box. There it is. That purple line right there. Still stuck under that purple line. Once we crack that, we can talk. We have another trend line right here. See that? So you had this breakout. Great. You had that important spot where it chopped out and failed. You're going to get the similar price action here if it can break through this upper trend line right here. But the problem is it's got this purple line in the way as well. This one looks very similar to Matic and BNB and uh, Morpheus and Quant where it broke trend and then drove sideways. So you got two options. This thing continues to drive. It looks like it's rolling over right now though and uh, rolls over to this trend line again and bounces. Or you get a situation where it cracks through this purple line and gets in this range up here. One thing or the other is going to play out. Typically, when you have charts that look like this, the end of 2019 was similar to what may happen here, where it was very, very rough on those assets. So you may see the end of 2023 here, or similar, where it's very, very ugly at the end of it. We'll get out toward that uh, September, October area in 2023. Uh, it may be really gnarly and pull back really hard uh, and perhaps test the local low that it made before. One step at a time, we'll see. I have it ranked right there with those other ones, okay? Um, I'm stacking fiat for VRA when the time is right. I have VRA on my list, I believe. I think I do. Let me see. There are no assets that I love. People ask me all that time, all the time, about things like that. And there are there are none. Yeah, I have it on my list, VRA, um, to buy some. Uh, I don't love any tokens. I don't love any assets. Uh, I love making money on them, and that's it. Um, there are none that captivate me and make me, make me think that I absolutely have to buy them. I trust nobody from any of these companies. I trust no CEOs. I trust no developers. I trust no influencers. I trust none of them. I don't care. I really don't. Um, I just want to make my money and leave. I'm just like every serious investor 
than invest money in the stock market. You just want to make money. You want to survive. You want to retire. You want to have money banked when you get older. Grow up. It's a hard thing to hear, but grow up and be ready. We got to sell at some point. All right. Um, I watched a lot of your videos on crypto tokens to pick up when the bull market starts. I will be ready this year. Listen, Denny Deep Buckets, you're going to kill it. You understand? You're going to kill it. And that's just thinking about what happens when the new stuff doesn't even come along yet. And you know that new stuff is going to come along. It'll be toward the end of 2023, but watch. New stuff will come along at the end too, and we'll be ready to rock and roll. I've already even talked to some people behind the scenes who I know are letting stuff out in 2023 at the end because they asked me. Um, let's see. Does falling wedge mean breakout to the upside or downside? Typically, it means breakout to the upside, and a rising wedge typically means breakout to the downside because it's failing to make new highs. Uh, and crack that resistance. Same thing down. It's failing to bust through support, so it's likely to bounce up. Um, you can't always say that, though. It's easier just to play the break and be smart about it. Um, a lot of chart patterns don't always play out perfectly on crypto. Again, it's a very immature market still. Um, Danny Carney, for a fact, watched all of them a couple times. Peace. Awesome, Thomas. I love hearing it. Greg Rubin, TA and TLC quotes. Nice. Yeah, you get it, bro. You get it. Um, gosh, y'all are talking a lot. This is awesome. What's up, Alvin? Good to see you, brother. Um, a toda so, a fucking a toda so. See, <laughs> my cousin Jeremy knows. That's good. I only got a gallon node left, Danny Carney. Yeah, pre is only one. I still have a few pre nodes, not a lot. Um, what's up, Frank? Good to see you, brother. A rope of dope says ALBT. ALBT. We got time for a couple more here. ALBT. All uh, right. Getting crushed by this downtrend still. Hasn't cracked it. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to draw that. Hasn't cracked it. Uh, until it does, no, thank you. Uh, I believe it will move pretty well. It's about to make new lows, as a matter of fact. So watch out. This is about to roll over and play dead and form another leg down. Um, when it cracks a trend, I'll be ready. All uh, right. Solana. Yeah, a lot of people have asked about Solana. It moved up and did a pretty nice little feel. Oh, God, it feels good. It's going up and it stopped dead ass in its tracks at sniper's alley look at that like er, breaks all right so two options stops at sniper's alley or gets its legs back and moves over sniper's alley and comes up here to the top of this trend line around 17 to 20 dollars chops at this trend line fails it rolls over and makes a double bottom all right or it stops here fails sniper's alley starts to roll back over and plays dead and comes down here and makes lower lows, which is what I think happens. Honestly, uh, I still like a, uh, five ish dollar Solana, but we'll see. I'm happy to buy it. If it doesn't go any lower than that and just stops at this current low around seven, uh, perhaps make a double bottom around here somewhere. If that's what it wants to do. Fine. I'm cool with that. Uh, but I would really, really like to snag it down there on the $5 range. I don't care about the problems. I don't give a shit about any of that. Um, I'm just here to make money on it. So I'm going to sell it when it goes back up. And uh, I don't care. We'll redo it again in 2023. At the end of 2023, when 2024 comes around, when it's time to get juiced up again, I'll be ready to fucking full throttle this jet again and we'll get rocking and rolling. But not until then. Um, I, I love me some TNT, bro. Mullet. They don't know. They're not ready for TNT. These guys don't understand. They don't understand. Uh, educate Dempsey says, oh shit, I'm late, but wanted to hit that like button, bro. Good to see you. Quick look, AVAX is the last one we will look at. It's playing around with $11 right now. Bounced off of 10, still stuck under trend, still stuck under resistance. This one will roll over and at least test $10 again. If it can't hold $10, she's heading down to the $5 range and I'm a buyer down there in that area. Simple as that. Now, thank you all for coming. It's been a solid hour. We got a whole lot more to come over in the Zoom after this, 786unlimited.com. Get you access to our Discord. About to fire up a Zoom and be on there for several hours. We'll talk about whatever you guys want to talk about on Zoom. It's interactive. You talk to me, I talk to you. We have a drink. We tell jokes. We chop it up. We'll talk about strategies. We'll talk about indicators. We'll talk about real tangible assets, equities, rental properties, real estate, whatever you want to talk about. That's what our Zoom is for. We connect one-on-one -on -one with everybody.
thank you all for being here. Again, I can't do this without you guys. It means the world to me that y'all show up. I'll leave you with this in the words of the late, great, notorious B.I.G. Every single one of you could have been anywhere in the world that chose to be here with me. Thank you. Seriously. I appreciate it every single time. The sky's the limit. Y'all be good. Peace.